welcome back to Ox Tools. If this is your first visit to my channel, I'm Tom, the host. And a little bit about myself, I'm a uh, lifelong metal worker, an avid crazy tool collector, and practitioner of all things mechanical. So during the day, I work for a not-so-secret government lab, uh, working with people that are a lot smarter than me, uh, making sure that they have all the tools, equipment, and devices they need to do their scientific research. When I'm here in my own shop, I'm on a never-ending exploration to learn as much as, as I possibly can about a trade that's been very good to me. Now, part of my responsibility to that trade is to share my skills and knowledge and experience with folks like you watching this video and hopefully along the way preserve some of that knowledge for future generations. So, with all that said, let's see what we got going on today. Uh, we're going to do another episode of uh, Tools from the Tool Room, fantastic tools from the Tool Room. And uh, in the comments, uh, it looked like folks wanted to see V-Blocks. Uh, I got a couple of votes, uh, or a few votes for to take a look, uh, kind of an in-depth look at V-Blocks. So this I don't know what most people would consider kind of a mundane little device in the uh, in the shop is actually a kind of an important part of your kit. So we're going to pull out, uh, we're going to go to the tool room, we're going to check out all the, the different kinds of V-blocks that we have and uh, talk about the different features and different usages of uh, our run-of-the-mill little V-blocks. Well I warned you guys I was an avid tool collector. <laughs> so. Actually, this is not even all of them. Some of these I have, there's pairs or even triples of, depending on uh, the style. Like I, this, this, I have several of those. Um, anyway, each one of these has kind of unique features that are probably worth discussing. Um, you know, some are very similar, like this tap pier style is very similar to this Anton. Um, but there is a little difference between the two that's uh, that's worth noting. So, uh, but we'll we'll start talking about them. And um, let's do. We're going to do the big ones first, and then I can just put those away, and then we can look at the uh, the smaller ones as we go along. But um, the point that I want to make is that uh, now clearly you don't need this many, right? So if you were going to buy one V block. Um, I would probably suggest uh, this style right here. This is a pretty useful size and configuration um, if you were going to just buy one. Well, I'd buy two of these, right? I'd have a pair. Um, and, but we'll talk about these because they're between this, this, and this, they all kind of look the same, but there's some differences there that are worth noting. So we'll do the big ones first, and then uh, we'll go to the smaller ones. All right, the first style that, uh, that I want to talk about is this particular one here, this style. And when I say style, um, let me clear a little bit of space here so we can speak intelligently. So when I say style, what I mean is that they have a, um, they have a foot, okay? You see all of these have a foot here. And so the, the foot is useful because um, it gives you a way to clamp this down. Um, that's one usage of the, of the foot. Um, and it's, it's kind of a handy ability to be able to use strap clamps on that and, and hold those down if you're going, say, directly on the, the deck of the mill or something like that, okay? Um, so that's a nice feature of that. Now this is a Taft Pierce. This is an unknown here, um, but it has a slightly different angle, and we'll talk about that in a sec. And then this is made by Anton, uh, which is a old tool making company that used to be in uh, Brooklyn, New York. They're no longer there. They're still in business, but they're no longer in, uh, in Brooklyn. So um, now the difference between these two here is, you know, clearly proportions, right? Um, but what the Anton has that the Tap Pierce doesn't is it has tapped holes here. And you might say, hey, what am I going to use those for? Well, if you want to make this into a fixture, you can bolt this down now because uh, you got a couple of tapped holes. And if they're made well, which these are all quality uh, V blocks, uh, this V is perpendicular to the side within pretty close limits. So now you've just created a, uh, 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 an angle plate um, so we can put 
say on the milling machine we can clamp around in there or something like that uh, uh, and off you go. So useful, useful feature having uh, those tap tools. Um, and now, let's see, did I make this? I don't even remember now. No, this is a, this looks like a stock clamp to me. And um, so these use a, instead of having a uh, kind of a central screw like this here that, uh, that clamps your part, uh, they have a bar and then, um, um, and then, oops, let's see, let's go this way here. And then uh, thumb screws that you can clamp this down. Now, you can, you can clamp something small, like so, okay, and then by flipping the clamp around like so, you can uh, do something much larger here. And you can see the screws are, are long to accommodate that. And this is basically the same thing here uh, in this situation, okay. So that's that style, the, uh, the, the wing style or the base style. Uh, I don't know what, the, uh, what a good official name for that is, but uh, that's kind of what I call it, okay. And I just do this just because it helps me clamp something uh, or keep the clamp uh, with the thing. So the, these tend to get separated from the clamp. So if you're looking for these on eBay, a lot of times they're missing the, uh, they're missing the clamp and the thumb screws because they don't fit in your toolbox like this, right? So you tend to take the stuff off, stuff it in your toolbox, and then these, woo, doo, 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 they sprout legs and they walk off and they become lost and, uh, and uh, you know, you never see them again. Okay, so that's that style. The normal, the normal angle between the two sides of a, you know, a common V-block is 90 degrees. Um, you know, 45 from center or 90 included here. Now this one here, you can see that that's clearly not the case, right? Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know who the maker of this particular block is, and um, um, it needs a regrind. But uh, um, this is actually a pretty challenging uh, grinding project uh, to get down in there, and um, so I just haven't got around to doing it yet. Um, and it's it's not pitted, but it's just kind of stained. So, uh, but anyway. Um, um, so one of the things that you can do in a V-block is, if you have something round, actually, you know what, this might be a good example here. Let's, let's pretend that this is round, right? Um, so one of the things that you can do is you can spin a round part in a V-block with an indicator at the high point. And then what this does is this will give you some ideas about uh, uh, about its roundness. Okay. Now, the danger is depending on how many lobes. Okay. And when I say lobes, we're talking about kind of microscopic lobes on your round part. So, for example, if you grab something in the three-jaw chuck and you clamp it very, very tight, and you turn that round and then you release it, you end up with a three-lobed part just from the clamping forces. Okay. So. Um, different angles of V's, okay, expose different lobe conditions of your part, okay. Now, I don't remember off the top of my head um, what um, the correlation is if it's, um, there's a little formula for figuring it out. So, um, if you're inspecting to close limits, then, uh, and you want to check roundness, roundness is actually pretty hard to check. But V blocks can expose uh, out of round conditions, uh, and you need a couple of different V angles to uh, to check for different lobing conditions, right? Because 90 degrees is uh, there's some symmetry with a certain number of lobes, right? Uh, say four, for example, um, and this uh, um, a 60 degree might. Uh, uh, I, I, I should just shut my mouth. Uh, I can't remember the the correlation and. Uh, but anyway, uh, the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, um, depending on the kind of lobes that you have, uh, you need different angle blocks, okay? And this is a fairly commonly known thing. Um, it's it's kind of hard to check, actually. So you need something that's, uh, that's definitely lobed. Um, and two-point measurements like a micrometer don't necessarily expose the lobe conditions um, and, uh, of, uh, of something that's out of round, okay? So. Anyway, that's why you end up with that. And then this one has a, a notch so you can clamp it down and do stuff to it too and a tap tool, which is nice. So This block um, has kind of sentimental value for me. 
Uh, although, um, oddly enough, uh, he didn't put uh, a maker mark on this. This is uh, from my old toolmaker buddy, uh, Charlie, uh, who taught me a lot of stuff and uh, was a real good friend to me and uh, kind of encouraged me. So, uh, but anyway, he, had, he made this a long time ago and he ended up giving this to me when, uh, when he was getting kind of getting, uh, getting up there in the years. Um, and this is his take on uh, what I would call a grinding cube. But it's got so many damn V's in it that I kind of call it a V block, okay? And um, so the idea behind this is you can clamp rounds in there and um, it's got a festoon with tapped holes so you can use strap clamps to hold it. But you can also stand it up and it's got some notches so that you can, you can clamp uh, things like this and grind the tops of them and they're perpendicular um, or uh, do, a, do a side grind and an end grind and have them be perpendicular. So, and, or do uh, different things to round stuff, okay? And um, so this is his take of a grinding cube. And um, now these, uh, these holes here, uh, which are nicely sized for your, your fingers to go in there. Uh, Charlie was, uh, he was, he was a bicycle nut. So he was, uh, um, he was very weight conscious of, uh, not himself necessarily, but all the stuff that he made, right? So he tended to kind of lightweight things. Um, and I got a bunch of examples of that, uh, of him doing that, you know, basically taking material out of there to get some weight out of there, right? And, um, and I can tell you from personal experience that, you know, you get enough of this stuff in your toolbox and your toolbox doesn't move anymore. It uh, basically becomes uh, you know, planted uh, when you start loading it up with blocks of steel like this that, uh, the <laughs> that aren't hollowed out. Uh, anyway, this one's kind of uh, interesting and uh, I've done a little inspecting on it and one side is better than the other. So Charlie, if you're up there in the, the big shop in the sky listening to me, uh, um, that's what that little arrow is about. Uh, the bottom to the V's is a lot better in this direction than the, the top. So I got to poke at him a little bit. So because uh, uh, he, he would poke at me. So uh, anyway, he was, a, he was a wonderful guy. So anyway, so that's a, a grinding cube slash V block there. So this one's pretty... Uh, Pretty cool. So I got this, uh, actually I got two of them, and they're a match set. Uh, I got this at a, um, um, a shop closing sale, and uh, I saw these and I go, wow, that's kind of neat. That's kind of asymmetric uh, V there. And um, so, once again, I don't have any, uh, oh, I could use this here. So if you got something that's kind of plate shaped or whatever, um, you, you can get a lot of contact surface there, right? Um, and I, I'm not clear what these were created for specifically, but this asymmetry has been kind of uh, useful in a few cases. Now, my only gripe is they're hard and they're ground, but there's not a, any kind of other features in it that, uh, that help you do anything. Uh, you know, a couple of tapped holes so that you can, when you put a plate in here, you can, you know, you can clamp it down or, uh, uh, some tap holes in the side or even even through holes where you can reach through with a with a can't twist clamp or something like that so um, uh, they're great for setup um, and if you can hold the if you can hold the part down say like that right um, then it's all fine and dandy but um, um, it, like I said it's been a challenge to um, to clamp with these with no other features in them. So that's kind of an a, asymmetric uh, uh, v, clamp, uh, v block. So. so this dude, this is quite the V block here. Now, um, let's pull the clamp off there. This was uh, made by a toolmaker friend of mine, Steve Edwards. Uh, super cool cat. Uh, I met him uh, via Craigslist and I bought a bunch of, uh, he was uh, clearing out his garage and he uh, was selling off some stuff, so I ended up with some of his really cool, uh, his cool design tools here. And I've shown this one before a long time ago, but this is like the the transformer V block, right? And uh, so it has this movable end on it, which is kind of uh, uh, pretty wild. Never seen anything like that, um, where you can actually offset this end and then clamp it down. And people are going, well, why the hell do you want to do that, right? Well. If you have something like this that has a, uh, 
uh, like a pin that has a head on it or something like that. Um, actually, let's just use this as an example here, if I can. Where, okay, so we can offset it like that. So we're bearing here and we're bearing there, right? And then uh, you can use this mighty clamp here uh, to, to clamp it down. Um, so there's that feature. He's uh, got a couple of big counter bores in there, so you can bolt this down and make a fixture out of it. Um, and then on this end, he's uh, got. Well, actually, those are just. Uh, oh, those are just through holes. I thought it had a couple of. Well, it's got a central, central couple of holes. Anyway, uh, um, he could probably run a stud down through there and, and clamp it vertically too. Uh, although. Uh, You'd probably have, end up pulling this thing off. I never, I guess, I never noticed that before. Um, and then, once again, uh, for things that have heads on them, uh, which is pretty common in die work, you know, ejector pins and uh, piercing pins and stuff like that, uh, they have heads on them, and you have to uh, machine features into them or shorten them or grind the heads or whatever. Uh, these little steps are handy for uh, for taking care of uh, uh, pin or headed uh, parts. Uh, and this thing is just massive and cool, uh, and uh, I was uh, um, I was smitten when I uh, when I saw it. So Steve, Steve, Steve's still around. Uh, he watches the videos once in a while when he's uh, when he's not doing uh, stuff with the family. So uh, Steve, I still love this V block. I've used it a few times. It's awesome, and um, uh, thanks for making it. <laughs> and he put his. Put his cool little maker mark in there. Uh, this is a, a ED, sinker EDM. He EDM'd it in there, which is kind of cool. So, this is another uh, Steve Edwards design here, um, and this is about as unique a uh, setup as I've ever seen uh, from a tool maker. Um, and so it's a V block, but it's also a multiple sign bar arrangement, right? So we got a five inch sign bar here. And then we got a three inch sign bar here. And um, so what that means is uh, when I have a pin or an object in here like so, I can elevate and uh, set a precision angle uh, either like that or if I go like this, um, I can set an angle like so, okay, off of this. So he's kind of covered all the angles uh, <laughs> between uh, zero and uh, 90 degrees. So, uh, and then, let's see, I don't have the right Allen wrench here. These can move around, they're on a, they're on a rail. So, I mentioned uh, uh, things that have, uh, well, that's a good example there, where you might have something that has a boss in the center or whatever, and you still gotta do some work on it, right? Uh, so you got these that are, they're basically in line, right? And, uh, but now you can accommodate a, uh, a bulge in the center or uh, off to one end, and that's what these notches are about here. So you can uh, you can do something like that, right? Actually, this, that's a good demonstrator there for that. And then big holes so you can uh, clamp it down, um, hollowed out so the thing doesn't weigh a ton. Although it's not uh, uh, it's not a lightweight by any means. And interestingly enough, uh, Steve he did a lot of jig grinding, so. Uh, these these arcs or these positions in the um, uh, for these pins uh, those are all jig ground uh, into this uh, into this there so oh hey he's got a, that maker mark uh, by hand and then his uh, his EDM star there which is pretty cool uh, this has just got a couple of uh, a couple of clamps and uh, I don't know the the clamps are uh, there's nothing super fancy about them they're kind of big. Um, but, um, you know, that's fine. You can put a, a fairly large diameter uh, round piece in here. So, uh, anyway, we're on to the smaller V blocks now. Um, so, we got a, actually quite a variety here uh, in these. And I, honestly, I don't know where to start here. Let, let's, uh, let's look at the, the ones that are, uh, are kind of common. Uh, and I think I said it earlier, but um, if you're going to buy, if you're like, oh my God, I don't know which V-block to buy, right? Um, I would start with uh, with one like this, okay? This is a Brown & Sharp uh, 750B, okay? 
and this is the same thing, okay, um, that I happen to saw off. So it's the uh, same height as the Kurt uh, jaws on the um, uh, on the tool room vise. So um, I would I would get one of these and make sure you get a you get a couple of clamps with it too. Actually, I buy a pair of those. I sh should uh, rephrase that. Get a pair of these with clamps, and that'll serve you for a really long time. And then ultimately, you'll end up with some other ones too. Um, these are. These are pretty easy to score on eBay. You can find a pair of these, uh, you know, 50 or 60 bucks with clamps that uh, that might have a little bit of staining on them or something like that, but uh, completely serviceable and uh, and good. And they're nice and square, so if you go from this surface to this, uh, uh, you're you're assured they're pretty good. And uh, so I would get that that style there. And if you don't like that style for whatever reason, then, then the next one I would get is probably uh, uh, a fishtail. And they call this a fishtail because it's got this little, it's, you know, it looks like a fish, I guess, is, a, is the idea there. And these are kind of handy, too, because they have, uh, um, you can put them on the mill and you can clamp them down. You can put a shaft in here. It's got a narrow one, and a narrow V, and, and, a, and, a, and a larger V with a clamp. And then this... If you note, if you look at this clamp, the clamp is kind of odd, right? It has this little side screw, and the idea behind that is you can lay it over on its side like so, and then you can use this to to fine tune the position of the block. So, um, um, so it's basically an adjustable lift. Um, that you can uh, you can trim the block out and uh, do different things with it like that. Uh, and it's got a tap tool in the uh, in the side and in the bottom, so you can attach things to it or attach it to things, which is a useful feature. So that's another really good one. So these would be the first two V blocks that uh, that I got. And this is a this is a Starrett version of this block here, and uh, they tend to sell for a little more money. Uh, they have the and they're basically the same with the addition of um, uh, a tapped hole, and they are just slightly larger. Okay, just a just a whisker bigger. So this is a um, um, actually these these three are kind of related here. Uh, once again, these are um, I, I had mentioned earlier the uh, the winged style here, right? And uh, this is tap this is tap Pierce. And uh, it's got their characteristic little uh, little clampy block there, right, and screws. Uh, but it's a wing style, so you can do stuff with that. Um, these these are pretty small, um, and um, I don't know. I, I don't think I use this very much. I just uh, um, basically wanted to collect the whole set of uh, the different sizes of V blocks. Now. Um, a, a useful size is, is this one here. This is a 9131 Taft Pierce, and this is a 9130, I think, right? A 9128, sorry. Um, and uh, it's got a big fat hole through the middle, which is kind of handy too if you want to drill, if you want to, you know, put a uh, put a shaft in here and then drill through the center of it or whatever. So that's kind of uh, kind of a nice feature there. Um, and then the proportions of this one are a little bit different too, so it's a little longer uh, compared to the width, so uh, a little more favorable uh, uh, from it's rectangular as opposed to square. Square doesn't buy you much, uh, you know, when you're rolling it around, so rectangular gives you a little bit of an advantage because you have one longer axis, so it gives you more setup options, I guess is what I'm trying to say, okay? So those are tap piers. And then this is another wing style, and this is an Anton, uh, I believe. Yeah, Anton, and um, uh, it's just you know slightly different proportions. Uh, it's got a bigger, if you notice, it's similar in size to this, but the V is considerably larger here on this one, um, and it's got the tapped uh, tapped holes. Actually, that was a one of my first uh, lapping projects. There, <laughs> I lapped the bottom of that uh, uh, for fun. And uh, so now it's nice and shiny at least. So. Okay, so let's uh, move those out of the way. And we'll talk about, let's talk about this, these guys here next. These are, um, so these are, these are Starrett's here. Um, and let's see, what model are these? 
271s. Now, normally, um, so these are a little different, uh, a little different style here. And normally, you see that center hole. It actually has a bushing in it, and these actually come with a uh, with a rod that they run on that keeps them in align in alignment with one another. So uh, they kind of stay together um, for different things. Now they're not they're not super precise. I think they're. Uh, um, they're just machined and then just not precision ground. Okay, they're ground, but they're not precision ground, I guess that's what I want to say. Um, you know, they look nice and all that, and they have this uh, color case hardening on it, which is all cool. Um, and um, so, don't tell anybody, but when I got to do some welding uh, in V-blocks, these are the ones I use. So, um, uh, don't tell anybody though, okay? <laughs> Um, and then for precision stuff, I use uh, you know some of the some of the other ones here, and the rods around here somewhere. I just uh, I could I didn't find it when I uh, went and grabbed these here. Uh, but uh, one thing I do like about these that's kind of nice is it's got these pretty sexy clamps here. Uh, they just have a nice shape to them and the way they're rounded and uh, um, it, it's just kind of pleasing. So those are the sterrets, and then this one here. And I have I have two of these here. This is a Brown and Sharp 1403. Believe it or not, this is the first. I bought a pair of these. This is the first machinist tool I think I ever bought, and uh, this is back in 1978 or 1980, somewhere in that region, somewhere, right? And um, they're Brown and Sharps. I, I bought them from. Uh, a guy at work and uh, at the place that I was working he was a kind of a tool bug and uh, his dad had a little tool dealer uh, you know used tools and antiques and stuff like that and uh, anyway I I want to say I paid 20 bucks for him or something like that which was um, probably a lot because I probably wasn't making 20 bucks an hour at that point and uh, so uh, it was a you know <laughs> anyway like I said they got a little sentimental value uh, the bottom of this one's lap because uh, um, we were doing a lapping project where uh, we were lapping the ends of some um, some pins uh, that were uh, needed to be lapped real flat and uh, sometimes it, it's expedient to um, you know not that the block uh, the fixture is sacrificial but it's getting lapped at the same time as the uh, as the part so you end up you know two for one I guess <laughs> Uh, two for one special there uh, on lapping. These are magnetic V blocks here. Um, so they have a switchable magnet inside of them. And it's basically a magnet that's a strong magnet that's on a rotating core. And that's, uh, it rotates inside that, uh, inside that circular uh, opening there. Okay. And that's the same thing as under that, uh, uh, under that cover there. So these are actually super handy, uh, in particular on the uh, on the surface grinder. Um, so they're not like super califragilistically strong uh, holding. So if you're going to put a, a shaft in it like that, now this is stainless, so we can't uh, we can't do anything with that. So. Um, uh, you know, and he wanted to do some milling and or whatnot on there. They're they're not particularly good for that unless you have an end stop or something like that. And this one came from my friend Charlie, and he drilled and tapped some holes uh, for that very purpose uh, to add some uh, some end stops and whatnot uh, that uh, uh, to help. And they're in the in the box with us, but uh, um, anyway, we're not we're not talking about those right now. Now the on the surface grinder, what's interesting uh, is uh, you use them kind of in this attitude like this. And so if you want to grind the end of a pin uh, round, for example, um, you can put it in like this and you put it in the direction of force and this basically resists that or you can put it like that, okay? And um, uh, so that you can kind of clear, right? So you see this one has a projecting knob and this one does not. Okay, so that would be the preferred configuration there. And then um, uh, making sure that, uh, and I spent some time on this one here, 
uh, on the base of this to make it very, very perpendicular to uh, the flats in here. So this one I reground um, the V and then I reground the bottom and lap the bottom to get this perfectly square with the, uh, with the universe there. Um, so you can plop that up on the magnet, snap that down to the magnet, and then uh, change your parts out just by swapping uh, uh, using the, uh, um, the knob control to take the parts in out. And you can put a little block under here to, you know, to, so you have repeat height and whatnot. But uh, very useful uh, for tall, skinny parts um, in the uh, surface grinder, which are generally a problem. Okay, you either got to hang them way out of a vise. Uh, or do some crazy stuff like that or um, um, when you have high aspect ratio parts, right, where they're, they're um, um, longer than they are wide, right, um, then uh, this, this is where this plays a good part. So uh, um, this is a Brown & Sharp uh, 750D and this is an SPI uh, blah blah blah. SPI has got a million different part numbers so uh, um, now, a desirable feature is these are hardened, but uh, pretty hard to find, and um, so and it's not clear in their catalog uh, which ones are hard and which ones aren't. So um, um, watch out, just uh, buyer beware. So uh, be careful. So that's a desirable feature that they're hard, uh, but most of them aren't because they conduct flux better when they're soft. So for whatever reason, the high carbon doesn't work. Uh, I'm not sure what the phenomena is there, but okay. And then this is a little mini version here. This is a Metatoyo, I think. Um, and uh, I have a pair of these, uh, once again, eBay find, and um, I'll grind them as a match set. And uh, this is useful, once again, if you have something that has a projection on it uh, that you gotta avoid and you still have to hold it, so, okay. Um, so that's magnetic uh, magnetic V blocks there, and uh, you know I have another one. It's a Starrett. It's kind of shorter and fatter, um, but that's about the only difference uh, between these guys here. So the longer the longer one is probably the more desirable uh, configuration if you're shopping for one. So I call this one the uh, tool room vice V block here, and this is one that I designed and made, um, and. Um, you know, if you, if you want the plans form, just email me, I'll send you the plans. Um, so this is actually a really useful trick here, is putting a V-block in a vise like this. So what you're doing is you're creating a three-point contact, one, two, three, right? Um, so a round part um, uh, cannot tip, okay? That's the general idea. This particular one, um, I've tapped the fasteners here and so that you can actually just attach it. Uh, I'm not going to screw it in, but uh, you, you get the idea. So it, you can mount it and then it won't move around so that if you have multiple parts, you know, you're swapping multiple parts out, it, it won't wiggle around on you. Now, V-blocks are not just for uh, round things and uh, this is a real useful trick. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to kind of... So let's say we're squaring up a whole bunch of uh, little chubby blocks like this, right? So you're using your face mill and you're, you're you know, rolling the block around like so um, to, um, you know, to square it all up, right? Well, you got these, these end features that you got to do, right? So now what? So if they're out of parallel from one another, uh, um, you got to either side mill them, okay, peripheral mill them, um, but if you want to use your face mill, which is a real efficient tool, you can plop them in a V-block like this, okay, and you get instantaneous squaring, and you can use the end surface of your tool, of your facing tool, which is a real efficient tool, okay, so uh, nice, uh, nice little trick. So you don't need this particular block. You can do it with a regular V-block and just put it in there. Uh, the advantage of this one is it's just a a whisker lower than the uh, the top of this jaw here, and um, um, so that uh, um, it's not in your way, basically. All right. Anyway, that's what that one's about there. Tool room vice view block, and you can just pop it loose. And then that number <laughs> that I wrote it with Sharpie is the uh, um, this 
the center line of the V from this from this corner here, which is useful. You pick that up, come over here, and you got your X already. So I should engrave that in there. Actually, is what I should probably do. Well, we're down to the uh, the smallest ones, the smallest V blocks now. Okay, and we got a couple of examples here. Um, so let's talk about this one first. This is a uh, um, Actually, you know what? I don't even know what they call this particular style. Uh, Herman Schmidt um, may have uh, pioneered this particular uh, kind of internal retention feature style. When I, and when I say that, I mean it's, it's completely inside this. So, uh, for example, um, let me uh, take the little, uh, the little clampy out, okay? So it's got a little insert piece. So if you were to... Oops. Basically, you can make this a, uh, a smooth uh, a square so that it's, uh, you can put it in kind of any orientation that you want, right? So what I'm trying to do here, let me just run these screws down like so. So if you get those screws below, below surface there, like so. Okay, so it's basically a, it's basically a square at this point, right? And this will hold, you know, clearly it'll hold very small uh, bits. And then this is a little pusher block here, and the little pusher block even has a little. Uh, you can see that it's got a little uh, a little V right in the surface there. So you can hold very very small uh, uh, little round things. So and that's what V blocks do uh, so well. So let me go, let me, actually, you know what, I'm just going to set that aside. So that was all made uh, by EDM, uh, wire EDM, uh, cut out, and then uh, probably, who knows where it got tabbed. Um, doesn't look like it was that side there. Um, don't know. So one of the wire EDM guys out there would probably say, well, I would tab that uh, uh, on a non-functional surface probably. So, uh, um that you can snap it loose, and then I'm looking to see if there's any uh, telltale witness marks, but I don't see any. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. And then these, these are they call them uh, wee wee blocks, as in wee weeny weeny teeny weeny uh, blocks, and they're basically kind of an insert holder. Um, and you can see that the, this has a V, so that you can insert said we block into a larger B block, big block, and uh, hold little round things. And, uh, and it even has little inserts that go down to kind of microscopic stuff here. And then alternately you can use these as a, uh, as a kind of a top cap too. Um, so you can distribute uh, your clamping pressure over the length of a, of a part, okay? Um, you know, that one's even smaller actually, okay? And this one's got a relief in the center for, for something that has a head on it, okay? Now, uh, these were made, uh, actually, you know what? I, I don't know who marketed these. Uh, was it SPI or Herrig or, uh, you know what? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe somebody out there knows uh, if, who the manufacturer of these are because it says, Super Wee Block. Oh, there it is. Faith Tool. God, that's a weird little name there. Faith Tool. And uh, pretty handy when you need one, let me tell you. Uh, if you got some little tiny pin to hold or something like that and do something too. So, Super Wee Blocks. And then these are little clamp, clamp shoes and whatnot that go on. This comes in a little kit. Um, and um, uh, some of them actually even had like an alligator skin uh, case, which was kind of a. Uh, kind of cool so okay so I think I have talked quite enough about V blocks so hopefully you guys learned something and uh, to uh, guide your uh, your tool shopping uh, a little bit so I appreciate you uh, watching please subscribe and uh, throw some likes on this or don't talk to you later